Good morning, everybody, and welcome to God's house. We welcome those of you who may be watching us online. Today we are celebrating LWML Sunday. Would you look at the front cover? Uh, that is the theme, The King is Coming. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty picture. So we're going to hear from the LWML and, uh, and their work. Uh, if you look at the, today is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, and on the inside you have a little history there that it was begun in Chicago back in 1942. And I think our church in Iowa, we had a woman there in Waterloo who was at that founding convention, if I remember. Anyway, um, our, our uh, title for the service is An Attitude Well-Pleasing to the Lord Jesus. I want you to think about that. An attitude well-pleasing. We all need an attitude adjustment from time to time, don't we? All right, so we're going to begin with the opening song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. You guys know this melody. Please rise and let us sing. Take out your hymn book. I know you'll have to go underneath the uh, quilt and take out your blue hymn book. And today we're going to use um, Divine Service 1 on page 136. If you would turn to that, please. Okay. You need the hymnal. We begin our time together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with true hearts and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And together we confess. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your punishment now and forever but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. 
Upon this your confession, I as a called and ordained servant of God's holy word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll continue with the uh, Kyrie at the bottom, and then on to the next page, the Glory and Excelsis. Together, please. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory be to God on high, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Who takes away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Who sits at the right hand of the Father, have mercy. For you only are holy. You only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we gather together to worship you on this your day, our Lord's day, the day of resurrection, the day when the grave was empty and you had risen from the dead. Dear Lord, help us to live our lives as your people who love you, that we may live as your disciples in this world and understand the way of life and the way of faith. Dear Lord, fill us with joy. So often we live with so much sadness and sourness in our lives because of the struggles we face. But dear Lord, help us to be individuals of joy and help us to bring joy into the lives of those around us. Fill us with the joy of salvation. For you, dear Jesus, have won for us through your life death and resurrection, the gift of eternal life. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please take time to greet those around you this morning.
Today we are celebrating LWML Sunday, and Suzanne Dalsis would like to share a few words about the LWML. Say good morning to her. been richly blessed with and we thank you all for your help in our mission goals. This year we were able to support two seminary students, VBS, Open Arms Pregnancy Center, our preschool, Samaritan Purse, Lutheran World Relief, Orphan Grain Train, the Lutheran Hour, and Bibles for Prisoners. Wow, yeah, let's celebrate that. We were able to support these efforts, these missions, by your contributions to our coffee fellowship and to the many members who individually give donations to LWML. And we thank you. These beautiful quilts, and there are 102 this year. We're proud of that. There's some stacked up in the cupboards in the parish hall. The beautiful quilts were made with love and will be sent around the world. You can help with shipping costs by using the white envelopes that are attached to the back of your seat. The envelopes can be placed in the basket in the narthex. And we will be collecting this money next week also. Shipping is expensive. Thanks to all who participated in the quilt raffle, to date we have $410 that was collected for the raffle, and these are all going to be sent to our seminary students. Good job, people. The winning ticket for the raffle will be announced after this service, so wait and see. Please join us for refreshments after the service, and thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. You're welcome. All right, take out your Bibles, if you would, please. And turn to the Gospel lesson, which is Matthew chapter... Matthew chapter 22. Okay? You'll find it on page 1,534, the parable of the wedding banquet. And again, you need to remember that uh, Jesus writes three parables or teaches, gives three parables in response to the, the accusation, it was more of an accusation, by the authorities who said, by whose authority? Do you do these things? So Jesus speaks three parables against him. And this is the last, all right? So the parable of the wedding banquet. And I'm going to read half of it, and you're going to join me uh, probably beginning with verse 8. Everybody there? Page 1,534. Are you there? All right. Jesus spoke to them again the par in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who'd been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fattened fat and Cattle have been butchered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention. They went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized the servants, mistreated them, and even killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Join me, please. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners 
invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets, gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him out outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Now turn to Philippians chapter 4, page 1830. Page 1830. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4, we're going to start with verse 4 in a moment. So the letter of St. Paul to the people in Philippi was written while Paul was in prison in Rome. And Paul was in that prison for four years. It ended up with his execution in the year, I believe it was 63 AD, when uh, Paul and Peter was also killed, when there was a great persecution against Christians around the Roman Empire. So Paul was there for a long time, under guard, in chains. He was awaiting trial, and guess what was going to happen? It wasn't going to go good for him. It wasn't a nice place. You ever been in prison? Nobody wants to raise their hand. That's okay. I just thought I'd trick you. <laughs> no, Ter not a good place to be, is it? All right? And remember the setting because of what Paul says while he's in prison. Crazy stuff. All right? So he writes several letters. These are his last words to his friends. And the last thing, if you're sitting in prison, the last thing probably on your mind in prison is the theme of joy. Yeah. Not much joy going on behind locked doors in a place of suffering. And 14 times in this letter, Paul refers to joy and rejoicing. Isn't that a mood? So let's read, okay? Or let me begin. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Join me, please. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace. All right, keep your Bibles open. We're going to go through the text. Look at verse uh, at the top, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and he says it again. By the way, this is an imperative. It's a command. In other words, keep on rejoicing in your life in the good times and in the bad how in the world can paul say that while he's sitting in a prison knowing probably full well it was going to end in his death a total injustice how can paul say that because he's learned some very important lessons he's learned to put everything into god's hand even the good, the bad, and the ugly. Think about that, all right? The real test of our joy and the real test of rejoicing in the Lord 
is not when things are going well, but is when we are facing the hardships of life, like being imprisoned. And Paul begins that with this. The next verse. Let your gentleness be evident to all. This is crazy. He's sitting in, ever been in jail where people are gentle? I don't think people are gentle in jail. We had a guy, we have a guy in our congregation who was a guard in jail. He says it wasn't a nice place. You didn't want to be there. I never got there, thank goodness. <laughs> but Paul talks about what? Gentleness. In the midst of sitting in probably a violent, ungentle world, let your gentleness be evidence to all. Let me tell you the word gentleness. It's softness, modesty, considerateness, and gentleness is to be shown to all. Even those who what? Hate you and want you dead. Why? Look at the next verse. Because the Lord is near. Think about that, people. The Lord is near to St. Paul, even in the midst of jail. One of the worst places you can be in the world, the Lord is near, and he knows what's going on. He's aware of your situation. Let's move on. In verses 6 to 7, okay? comes a living prayer, Don't, another imperative, don't be anxious, stop worrying. In everything you face, prayer is designed to give thanks to God. It is an anecdote to worry, spending time in prayer. You know why prayer is so valuable? When you're praying, what, what's, what do you have to do? Don't tell me fold your hands and bow your head. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to focus, but you have to what? Okay. All right, I'm on a totally different plane here. You have to put into words and thoughts what's going on. Correct? And it's always healthy when things, bad things are happening, you put those thoughts, even put them down on paper, that helps you to do what? understand them better and deal with them. Didn't you ever do that? Yeah. When you did, and remember, yeah. So prayer is very therapeutic because it enables us to actually put all of these emotions down on paper, if you will, or coming out of our mouths in words. And that is healthy, <laughs> to spend Times of anxiety. I have a phrase I want to share with you. Uh, where is it? The way to be anxious about nothing. The way to be anxious about nothing is to be in prayer about everything. You guys heard that before? No. Well, you're, you're pretty smart there, buddy. Yeah. The way, the, the way to be anxious about nothing is to be in prayer about with uh, with about everything and not whining not whining and complaining but you pray with what thanksgiving when we follow that advice what verse are we on look at verse 7 when we follow that advice guess what happens the peace of god comes to guard our hearts and our minds now, that you, we pass over that. But think about that. God's peace. I call that a settled peace. What does it come over? It guards what? Hearts, which is our... Oh, come on, our emotions. And our minds, which is our thought process. You guys are late. Why wake this morning? It involves our emotions and our thoughts. So the peace of God will guard your life, your emotional element, dimension of your life, and your mental dimension of your life. 
That's what prayer releases. You understand that? Prayer releases to God. You're just not bearing it alone. Everybody understand that process? You're not bearing it alone. And the peace of God is there to guard your heart and your mind, your emotions and your thoughts. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Verses 8 to 9. Look at verses 8 to 9. It's one long sentence with high, someone called it high moral ethics. Notice the words. Let me go, let's go, let me go through it. Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable. We're not done yet. Excellent, praiseworthy. Think about those things. I don't think it's an accident there's seven of them. Seven of them. Think about that. Yes, the completeness. On these things we should focus our energy. Now, again, put Paul is writing this in prison. There's not a lot of nobility, pureness, loveliness, admirableness, and excellence and praiseworthy in prison. I wouldn't think so. So put, put, it the, put the position... In this worst of situations, Paul says, and have these noble qualities in your life. When all hell is breaking loose, you focus on the things of God. It's crazy. It's nuts. All right? Now, let me just say this. One of the things we see in news all the time, and it's part of our sinful human nature, you can always tell when the devil shows up, right? You should be able to know that. And when you watch the news, interpret it from what you know about the powers of darkness and the things of God. Because the devil doesn't work with these qualities. He likes these qualities. Let me share them with you. The first one written down, I stole this from somewhere. He likes smut. Do you love that word? The devil likes smut. He likes pain and agony. He likes jealousy. He likes hatred. And wherever there's hatred comes... Wherever there is hatred comes revenge. That's the devil's way. When you watch television, when you watch the news, filter it through the eyes of faith. You can see the power of devil wherever there's lying, cheating, and stealing. Whenever there's robbery, whenever there's, whenever there's conflict, whatever there is, you can see it through the eyes of faith, and you see the power of the devil at work instead of these other qualities of pureness, nobleness, what is admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. By the way, we're going through this in our Bible class. You guys should be in Bible class. We're going through it in the parables about the wisdom, knowing our weaknesses. And knowing our weaknesses helps us to what? Or leads us, I should say, to praise. And identifying our weaknesses enables God to what? Help us deal with them in our lives. And I got good, bad news for you. All of you have a weakness, and you probably got two or three. All you have to do is hit the person next to you, and they'll let you know. Okay? But true, the way of God is that way that, that Paul talks about. And the way of evil is this opposite way. Notice that in life. You can always tell the devil's involvement. It's anger and conflict and and greed and revenge. All right, let's finish this up. Finally, Paul says, like we heard last week, whatever you've learned from me or received from me, whatever, the, whatever you've seen me do or what I have said, follow me. And it's not, Paul is not full of himself. He imitates the Lord Jesus and he calls us to imitate him as well and to learn from
from him. Follow me, Paul says, as I follow Jesus. And it all ends with a benediction. The God of peace will be with you. To face trials, near-death experiences, rejection and beating. The God of peace will be with you. So, part two is joy. What is joy? I want you to think about that for a moment. What brings you joy? For many of us, joy is an emotion that swings along with sadness and sorrow or anxiety. In some homes, grandchildren bring you joy, right? right. They walk in the door, boy, they bring you so much joy. And as I said in the early service, and the second element of joy is when they, when they walk out the door and go back home, right? right? That's a problem when you have your own children. They don't leave, you know? But joy is, is, can be a mood, right? It's a mood. It's an emotion. When things make us happy, when the, all the bills are paid and I still got money in the checking account, okay? Uh, or whatever it may be. That makes me happy, all right? And... Joy, for most of us, is an emotion that comes and goes. It's a mood. That's not joy in the Bible. Joy in the Bible is much more than a mood. Joy in the Bible is a way of life. Let me say that. Joy in the Bible is a way of life because it's not based upon what's going on in your life. It's based upon the involvement of Jesus Christ in your life. Joy is a way of life. Joy is a living the life of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, dealing with all the garbage that life throws to you. But even in the midst of all that garbage, you can find joy and the peace of the Lord. Doesn't mean you are good. He doesn't call you to be an idiot. Doesn't call you to put your head in the sand. He calls you to live a life of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that finally all things belong to him. And the worst thing that might rob us of joy would be our own death or the death of a loved one. Yesterday I had a funeral at a different congregation. And I think about that. You know, what happens with people in the death of a loved one and they got nothing? No joy in the Lord, even in death. Nothing. He's dead. She's dead. Now what? That's so many in our world today. They got nothing. For believers, we still have the sadness of the death, but we have the joy of the Lord because as yesterday, that person who died Jesus came to take them home. And for those of us who remain, the Lord is of peace, is with us. So joy is not a mood. It's a way of life. It is a living, the life of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy in the Bible is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So the last thing I want to say to you today is please bring joy to others. Please focus on that this week. Bring joy to others. Our lives should bring and reveal the quality of these verses and the qualities of faith in the lives of those around us. I want to read you something from John Wesley. Remember John Wesley? He and his brother began the what? Methodist Church, yeah. Good, good boys. He wrote this. Listen to this. Sour godliness. Sour godliness is the devil's religion. Isn't that great? Sour godliness. Well, I'm godly, but I'm a pain in the neck. And nobody wants to be around me because I complain all the time and I find fault in everything. And that's just the way life is. 
sour godliness is the devil's religion. So let me say to you, don't be sour. Bring joy into people's life. Think about that this week and work on it. Be self-reflective. That's one of the things we're learning in Bible class, aren't we, guys? We're learning by being self-reflective. Work on bringing joy into people's lives, even and especially in the midst of conflict and bad things. And I'll have you report next Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to continue. What are we going to continue with? Oh, the offering first, and then we're going to sing the joy of the Lord. Right, fellas? And uh, it, there are three verses with refrain. And between the second and the third verse, there is a pause. So you will have to pause there. Wait for the key change. Larry, you and Lima are going to lead us, are you? Okay, come on, girls.
take out your insert and turn to Faith and Fellowship. And uh, there's a number of folks we need to add to the list. We want to keep Bill Volkert Sr. in our prayers. Uh, he's dealing with some serious health issues. Uh, also, Hannah Kerber, um, uh, I guess her skin cancer issue is not resolved, so we need to pray for her. Uh, and I, I have a few to add to the list. John Coffey, who is Dolores Nickerson's brother, uh, has uh, pancreatic issues, I understand. Uh, Daniel Brinkley, a young father, has a mass on the liver. And Mark Ayers, um, Mrs. Dalsus' father. Molly's dad is having surgery this week. And we also want to raise up Erica Ross. Many of you remember Erica. Her family had the death of her mother-in-law uh, at the age of 66. Uh, she passed away this week because of a massive heart attack. So we need to pray for that family. I'm going to give you a chance to pray uh, as well. So let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we gather together this day. And dear Father, we thank you for the blessings of the LWML, not only in this congregation, but in our church body, and the great mission society that they have become and have been for many years. Dear Lord, thank you for all of the service these, women's, these women render in local congregations, but also for the service they render in many places around the world. Dear Lord, be with them, bless them, that they may continue to do your work, dear Jesus, of bringing Christ to the nations. Lord, in your mercy. We pray this day also, dear Father, for all those who need our prayers, for Bill Volkert Sr., for Hannah Kerber and Greg Marshall and, and John Coffey, for Daniel Brinkley and Mark Ayers as he prepares for surgery. Your Father in heaven, bless these men and women and all those who are dealing with health issues and cancer. Dear Lord, even in the midst of their treatments and battling sickness, give them the joy of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. And dear Lord, we pray this day for Erica, Erica's family, the Hall family, as the mother-in-law passed away at the age of 66, dear Lord, surround them with your presence and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, dear Father, we ask your blessings upon an, and an end to the war in Israel. Dear Father in heaven, as we watch this horrific bloodshed and the brutality of mankind, Dear Lord, use the nations of the world to bring an end to this atrocity. Dear Father in heaven, bring an end to this and watch over those people who are suffering so badly. Finally, dear Father, we take time to privately pray our own prayer. We gather all things, dear Father, as we pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus, the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you. And the peace of our Lord be with you always. Thank you. We continue with the sacrament, and there are two songs to be sung. body of Christ is given to you. The body of Christ body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ empower you to live, live the lives of faith and joy and bring joy into the lives of those around you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you this day and fill you with his peace and his joy. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, trunk or treat. Are there inserts in the bulletin? Not this week. We do need trunks. And that means you uh, open up the, your trunk of your car and you have some candy in there. And uh, the kids come by, and decorated. and you and you and you're joyful with them, <laughs> and let them and decorate it. Yes. Okay. So talk to Allison. Bible class people. This is very important. Read the chapters for this lesson five, which is Proverbs 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Six chapters. Because we now we'll never get it done otherwise. So you need to read ahead of time and maybe read it twice, okay? By the way, you guys you should be in, others of you should be in Bible class. We're, you learn a lot of wisdom, you know? And, and not that any of us have any need for more wisdom, but uh, you should learn a few things. And well, blessing on the quilts, and that Suzanne wants to say something. So let us have a prayer, not on the blessing the quilts, but those who receive them. Dear Lord, as these quilts are shipped this week, wherever they may go, dear Heavenly Father, may they be a blessing from you into the lives of people we will never meet. And dear Lord, that is a wonderful way of doing mission work, of showing love and kindness and mercy to those we don't even know. And so, dear Lord, whoever receives this, may they not simply be a sign of our love for them, but more importantly, a sign of your provision and your love for them. May the gospel of Jesus Christ journey with these quilts around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, blessing on the quilts. Do you want to do the drawing? Or you want to do that? Oh, we're going to quit. All right, so let us... Let's sing the song, Serve the Lord with Gladness. I'm sorry, this is my first time I haven't done this before. And we're going to sing the three verses of, this is the LWML hymn, and we sing it to which song? Onward, Christian Soldiers. So we're not going to sit and sing. Please stand and sing. And then you'll be seated afterwards for a special event. And Larry, we'd like you to